guys, how's it going? So this afternoon I'm just working on some garden maintenance projects, um, particularly around the chicken coop area. I just started to cut back some things like the climbing roses around the run, which I have one left to do. Um, I've got some other just shrub roses nearby I need to cut back. And then I was cutting back my butterfly bushes. I started to anyway. I cut the one back that's right here. Um, and I thought that you guys might like to see how I cut mine back and why it's important to do that. We're also going to be tackling things like cleaning out all the dead boxwoods in the window bo uh, box. So a couple things fell through the cracks this winter when I was eight and nine months pregnant and then, you know, I had a newborn there. Um, and we forgot to water the window box <laughs> all winter long. So those poor boxwoods did not survive. Um, I think I'm gonna order a new window box though. Don't you think it would look really nice to have a black one, like a black wood one here instead of this kind of hay rack? style. Either that or I need a new cocoa fiber liner. One of the two things needs to happen. And it always amazes me how much these beds look so bare in the wintertime and then they fill in so fast in season. I mean the whole view does look a little bit different just because the pines and evergreens, the other junipers that were behind the gazebo are gone and the gazebo is leaving the first week of April and our greenhouse is on its way from the UK. So that should, that project should be happening here pretty quick. Um, but this is really what I wanted to focus on mostly because I have several butterfly bushes to cut back. I cut this one back by about half. This is one called Miss Violet. Beautiful deep purple blooms for a good portion of the summer and through the fall, like through a good part of the fall. And uh, it's just really important to keep them pruned, to keep them nicely shaped and in a way where you can see the blooms. So butterfly bushes bloom on new wood, which means that they form their growth and their blooms during their current growing year. So we can prune them back when they start showing their uh, new growth in the spring. Um, and it's actually a really good time to do it because then you can cut them back right above a really strong set of buds. Um, and I'll show you an example. I've got several more, I think I just said we have several more to cut back. I'll show you an example of um, like some weak looking buds versus cutting them down to a strong set of buds. But what happens on these butterfly bushes, particularly the varieties that get really tall, if you don't prune them, they become what's called a second story plant, um, which means that you can only see their blooms from a second story window because they end up so high on the shrub. If we keep them pruned down like this, and then let them put on their new growth and new blooms, they'll always be at a nice, well, they'll be in a nice shape, but they'll be at a nice height, the blooms will, to where we can always enjoy them from ground level. So there's the girls. They're looking pretty happy in there. We just recently removed the uh, plexiglass walls. I had all of these walls fitted with plexi, which is like an eight inch gap all around the whole top. So it's got really good ventilation, but it helps keep um, them protected from strong winds and all the moisture of winter. So anyway, they stay pretty happy. Right around the corner here though, I've got another butterfly bush. This is another Miss Violet, which this one is crazy. There is a little bit of a climbing rose kind of falling over into it that we need to take care of as well. But the one in front of the coop looked just about like this before I cut it back. I mean, the first thing that we will tackle is getting out all of the dead branches. So if anything, you know, is obviously dead, we'll take that out first. And then we will find a branch, like let's take this one for example. Right here you can see there's some new growth there. But the top growth looks, you know, not great, a little bit weak. If we follow that branch down, look at how much stronger these look. So I'm gonna wanna take this branch down to you right above a strong set of buds like that. And you, most of the time you can kind of size up a shrub. You can look at it and be like, well, all the strong buds kind of look like they're in about this range right here. And then you can kind of shape up your, your whole shrub to look like that. And at this point you can leave it a little higher if you want to find stronger buds up taller, if that's kind of the look you're going for, or you can prune it about down a little bit harder to keep it a little bit more under control. Doesn't that look better? Oh my goodness, it needed a prune job really bad. And I could have taken it down further, like don't be afraid if you wanna size control it a little bit more than I did, you certainly can do that. I wanted to leave a little bit of height on mine though because I do have things that actually will come up, it doesn't look like it, um, but there are Baptisia, Yarrow, Salvia, um, and some other things, Veronica in this area that take up the first one to two feet 
of the shrub. So I do want to make sure that I've got some nice layers and that this one kind of pops up above all the other perennials. So anyway, if we take a closer look, see all those nice looking buds? That's why it's really important to wait until your butterfly bush has put on a little bit of growth because then you can really e easily distinguish where the strong buds are and where the weak ones are and then where dead branches are. So we were able to clean out a few dead branches that were in there and just really give the shrub a once over. And sometimes they are a little bit late to push dormancy, so be patient with them. So that's pretty much it with butterfly bushes. Before I move on to the other butterfly bushes in the uh, garden, I do wanna clean up this Zephyrin climbing rose and then also the shrub roses beside me. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about these Serbian spruce lollipops. Cause they're not looking super great. This is their, they've been in, oh boy. Have they been in these containers for two full years? I think they have been. They've survived, this is their second winter. And if you look inside the shrub, it is nice. Like they've got some really nice growth in there, but it looks like they just suffered some tip damage this year, which is really sad. I don't know if they dried out as well. It's possible. Um, we do have a lot of wind. I mean, you can see we're a little breezy right now. Um, like yesterday, it was horrible. We all stayed inside because it was just horribly windy. Um, so that can do a little bit of this sort of damage as well. So I, what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna shear these up a bit, but I am gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till it warms up just a little bit more, which it's hard to look at them looking like this, but I think when we shear them up, it will um, kind of spur them on to put on some new growth. I'll put some holly tone in the containers. Anyway, we'll hope for the best because I really like these lollipops. You can see the other one over there. I need to fix that pot, it's kind of leaning. All right, so let's take care of the roses quick. So we've got this one here, and then there are four Lady Gardener roses right here. And we just recently put out a video about how I prune my climbing roses, and also how I prune my shrub roses. We'll link both of them down below if you want um, some more like detailed information. But for now, I'm just gonna haul into these because I've got a lot of stuff to do today. is going on in here. My word. You are creating such a ruckus. Yeah. All right. You want some treats? Black ones won't quite eat out of my hand yet. Beverly will though, huh Bev? Yeah. All right, so that climbing rose looks a lot better. And you can see how I've kind of trained the canes to come up and there's like one horizontal one for every section because the lateral growth will come off of the main cane and that's where the blooms will be produced. So we should have some really nice coverage on this side. This is definitely uh, the rose that had the longest canes of all four. I have another one right in the corner, like right where the actual coop starts. And then I have two along the back side here. Pop around here and show ya. So there's that one that I had to do probably the most severe prune job. And then 
this one here in the corner but won't that look beautiful when this whole run is just like engulfed in those bright pink zephyrin roses oh i can't wait and then the lady gardeners have been cut back and thinned out they were getting pretty thick in there i also cleaned some dead creeping charlie i mean it's not dead but the dead uh, top growth of it out of the pot that has the miniature peach in it and then while i was here i went ahead and cut back the ivy that had some winter kill on it it's looking much better but with these um, juniper spirals i'm gonna have to do quite a hard shear i think as well because it looks like the same thing happened to these it must be just wind damage i'm thinking because it was so dry this year and so windy either way i think the plants will be fine they look healthy on the interior just a little tip tip damage and then we got the window box cleaned out it looks better almost just not having anything in it um, so now i need to look around and see if i can find a window box that i like um, otherwise i'll just get a cocoa fiber liner and just plant that one up again which just may be the case. It's kind of cute and quaint looking on this coop. Before I leave this spot, I may not even get to the other butterfly bush trimming today. I remembered that I wanted to get the lavender transplanted from in front of the gazebo to this front area um, in front of the chicken coop because I think that'll look so, so pretty to have that there. I've got butterfly bush and roses and day lilies and salvia. I thought the addition of some uh, lavender would be some nice color without having to use annuals because as you know, I do use a lot of annuals in this bed, or I have, as I slowly start adding in more perennials. So I think what we'll do is we will uh, take a cart over, grab the lavender and bring it over here. And I think the cart that I was gonna use, I used to gather firewood last night because Benjamin really wanted to have a fire inside. So, all right, plan B. I'm just gonna use these on this cart. That works. I always find a use for these empty nursery containers. I've just got stacks of them. Okay, so here we are. We have a lot of transplanting yet to do before the gazebo goes. Um, I have trimmed back some of the roses. These are the carding mill and I've got basketballs over here. I've only trimmed back two of those. Maybe I can get that done today. Anyway, um, I also am excited about the Purissima blonde tulips. They are so beautiful. And you can see we've held off mulching anything in here, really in a lot of places, because we have so much drip irrigation to fix this year. But things will look better once it's all mulched. But anyway, here are the lavender, 10 of them. I'm gonna cut them back, dig them up. Actually, we'll dig them up, then I'll cut them back, then we'll get them transplanted. And it is a great time of year to transplant things before they've really started to grow. Um, that way you can get them dug up, get them moved when it's not so hot, it won't shock their system. They don't have as much foliar growth to support. Um, so that is a good time. I have heard that like um, transplanting spring bloomers is best to do in early fall and transplanting fall bloomers is best done in early spring. It makes sense because you know if you transplant something the furthest away from its bloom time it's most likely to bloom that year and you won't forfeit the blooms. Um, when you transplant there's always a little bit of a risk. Um, just make sure you dig up as much of the root ball as you can. Keep them really well watered. Try to do it when they're dormant if you can. Um, if you can't it's not a big deal. Do it anyway like we find ourselves in a situation sometimes where we just have to move something in our garden um, and just just move it you know cut it back move it keep it really well watered it may look poor that year but most likely plants are resilient most likely the next year it'll be just fine um, sometimes we lose stuff that happens too but I think that the the ratio of success to failure with transplant usually I have more success than failure with it so that's that's good
So I decided to put three right here because there's going bananas daylilies right behind them. So a light yellow daylily with the deep purple lavender. I think that'll be really beautiful. And then I stopped a lavender hedge. I was gonna keep going, but I think it would be nice to start something different right in here so it's not like all the same. Plus I've got some Indigo Glow, Indigo Girl Salvia back in here that will bring the purple and then the Miss Violet um, Budlia that will bring purple. So maybe a different color up here. So the rest of the lavender is going right around this flower bed, like leading right up to the coop. I think that'll be beautiful spilling over the bricks right there. Really pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna cut them back, plant them with some Biotone starter fertilizer, and then water them in really well. And I'll thank myself later if I use this. Okay, so I've got the three lavender planted and watered in right there. And then we've got seven planted and watered in on the edge of this flower bed here, which I think is gonna be a really pretty look. You can see how far I space them. I use my trowel as a measuring tool, super scientific and precise, I know, but I think it'll be a sweet little hedge. And I really love Sweet Romance Lavender. I think it grows 12 to 18 inches tall and wide. We have a hedge of it in front of our vegetable garden and it's been a really, really beautiful accent right there because it doesn't get massive and a lot of lavenders get really big and I needed something that was um, more just compact because it's our driveway area and it's really dark in color, very fragrant and I like to have dried lavender bundles around the house and you guys know that when you dry flowers, a lot of times they lose a little bit of their color. Well, the Sweet Romance main contains a lot of its color because it's so dark to begin with. And I make a habit of cutting my lavender back hard every year. I know I don't let it create a woody base. Um, and if you have let your lavender kind of uh, grow for a year or two and you haven't really cut it back hard, you don't want to cut it back as far as I just did. Um, because if you cut into that woody growth, it can risk, you can risk losing your plant much more than if you kept kept it up on the softer growth, but because I don't let it have a chance to form that woody growth, then um, I find that it survives. Anyway, so we got the lavender planted. I got the three Boscoville roses uh, cut back in front of the gazebo, and that's really all I have time to do this afternoon. Um, but I'm really happy to have just buttoned up a few things, and I really wanted to just talk to you really about the butterfly bushes, um, because they're starting to wake up in most of our gardens, and so I just wanted to let you know to prune. Prune your butterfly bushes. Ooh, and Russell does that on the wood. It's like fingernails on a chalkboard. Hey, our stuff is coming up over here. Remember planting these? I do little tour come up you guys on the south side more. yeah all the bulbs on the south side of every bed come up first well these will come up we'll enjoy them and then we'll tear down the whole thing probably it looks worse yeah it like does. the brick looks patio bad. looks way worse now that everything else is gone it's the art of distraction and we're not employing that right now like we've just laid waste so now yeah. i notice this so much more hey what do you think about planting a big tree like somewhere somewhere in here that will shade the eventual partly something like that yeah some, like, I afternoon something that I agree yeah I think that shade. that should should happen it needs to be something that's not super thick though I don't want it to be thick shade uh -huh. I want it to be kind of dappled okay. because I I mean you have a greenhouse you kind of need sun well but not necessarily afternoon sun I mean if it just gets a good block or morning day, sun well it would probably be all right even it would only start to shade it in the afternoon if it, we was like this far away right right I mean if it's but I'm thinking like maybe something more formal, like maybe four somethings yeah. or something. But I think I need to live with it for a minute. Sure. I need to have it done and know exactly where it's at and where all the plants, yeah, you I know. Agree, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Did I already end the video? I don't know. I don't either. If I didn't already end this video, because I can't remember, you distracted me, Erin. Good afternoon, <laughs> good evening, and good night. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're having a great day, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.